Mr. Rimet, 82% of the time, according to the Auditor General, directors were conflicted in the transactions over the five years, and those overlap with your time on the board. So Mr. Emet, uh, when a board member of the committee is briefed that other board members have a conflict, uh, do they recuse themselves or leave the room? Because your chair, Ms. Fisherian, didn't know the difference last week when mm -hmm. she testified. Mr. President. Mr. Chair, while I was uh, on the board, I observed that all the administrators who had declared conflicts of interest recused themselves by not being present. There were gaps in the minutes or errors in the minutes. That's well accepted. We know that. So there are errors, but that can't be. Action. You didn't actually leave the room. So let me let me go over this. So you were you were appointed in 2019. Annette Vacheron is appointed the chair, and you went to the CEO. She testified here before committee. She testified and said. Direct, uh, that you said direct conflicts of interest are now allowed. So I'm going to join the board that I was asked to join of a company that had already been doing businesses with SDTC. Is that correct? Did you say, well, now that conflicts are allowed, it's okay for me to join that board since it's doing business here and the chair is allowing that? By the way, that was Lydia. J'avais exercé une option. I exercise an option in that business after informing the board, and it had nothing. The witness is not answering the question. I asked him mm -hmm. if he said this, and he's going to what his investments were. I'll ask that question Point later. Point of order. Point of I order, would Mr. like Chair. the witness to answer the questions. Mr. Wiemet, did you say I'm going to join the board of Lithia now since Annette Fisherian is the chair and conflicts are at odd. Yes or no? No. You see, I did. No. That the CEO lied to committee. I joined the board, but not because Annette Vercheren was there. I didn't know Annette Vercheren. You were already on the board. You went to the CEO. I'm the CEO has testified <laughs> that you said you would join the board of Lithia now that Annette Fisherian's on board because conflicts of allowed. Did you say that? Yes I, or no? I, and I it's did, important, and here's why. I said no. I can, I, how many times do you need no? This is no. So you're saying the CEO lied? I don't know what she said. What is your 1% of lithium worth today? $11,000. $11,000. And in that time, while you were on the board, Lithian on early 2022 got $4 million from SDTC. Is that correct? I've, uh, I've Before I was appointed, it received $4 million. Well, according to SDTC's records, it was in 2022 that it got $4 million. That's on their website. Are you saying that SDTC is wrong on their no. website? L'investissement... Well, there are some nuances here. The investment was approved in summer 2018 before I was appointed, and then it was provided little by little during the, the project. Thank you. Mr. Kukucha, have you read the SDTC's enabling legislation, the Canada Foundation for Sustainable Development Technology Act? I presume you have. You, you do need to, as I said, you do need to unmute yourself, sir. But back to you. I, there you I, go. Yeah, over to you. Um, uh, honorable member, I have not read the entire act. I have read the policies related to SDTC. Um, board member, as, as a, a board member, surely you were familiar with the enabling legislation. I mean, I find it incredible to, if you weren't. I mean, that's a big problem in and of itself. Uh, uh, sorry, I keep getting muted. I apologize, honorable member. I keep... Uh, I. I have a general overview of the legislation, but I do not have not read it in detail. On it sure isn't actually a very big piece of legislation. Uh, it would take all of 15 minutes to go through. And uh, if you had bothered to read the act, you would have known that at section 
16 sub 2, it states, quote, no member shall profit or gain any income or acquire any property from the foundation or its activities. That's precisely what was happening in the case of Mr. Vandenberg. So not only was uh, he in a conflict of interest in providing legal advice, he was breaking the law. Isn't that right? I, based on your statement, uh, honorable member, I, I will take it at face value. I would only comment that once we got into the special committee process, I actually did uh, flag for the board uh, and management the issue of Mr. Vandenberg and ask he be removed, um, but he was not removed at that time. So uh, again, conflicts of interest, Im money improperly going out the door and reliance supposedly in good faith on counsel who was in a blatant conflict of interest and who was in blatant contravention of the SDTC Act. I mean, it's just unbelievable that you can come here with a straight face and defend the practices of SDTC and its board in the face of that. And speaking, Mr. Kakucha, of law breaking at SDTC, uh, which you were complicit in, uh, Mr. Vandenberg was part of a two-member council a council that under the Act is required to have 15 members and requires five members to achieve quorum, and yet this two-person council appointed five directors to the SDTC board, all unlawful appointments. How do you explain that? Uh, honorable member, um, when I joined the board, uh, this uh, system was in place and operational for many, many years. Uh, I did flag and the board did have discussions. In fact, the Auditor General, in her and, damning and report, which you won't even concede or accept, said that the board that you sat on was complicit in this illegal activity. The board supported the law breaking. Isn't it part of a culture of corruption, self-dealing, and law-breaking? Isn't that what was going on? Because I would say to you, Mr. Kakucha, it raises serious questions about why the board would have been complicit in having an unlawful two-member council. It was all about making sure liberal insiders and cronies of board members were appointed as directors so that they could get a piece of the action to pad their pockets in a corrupt racket that makes the sponsorship scandal look small by comparison. That's what happened. You have the floor, sir, uh, if you'd like to respond. Yeah, honorable member, I can only speak to my own conduct. Um, I, I, I did not have, there was no corruption that, uh, that I directly saw or was aware of or participated in. Um, errors were made. We acknowledge those. I did. At, at accept the results of the Auditor General's report. And candidly, I did flag for the board issues with both the me Members Council and Mr. Vanderberg, but they were not acted upon. Um, as a new member to the board, all I could do was my best to raise issues, see if they were dealt with, and um, try to move the organization forward in a positive way. Um, and uh, But I will concede errors were made uh, for sure. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Mr. Kakucha, you said you hadn't bothered to read the SDTC Act, uh, not, which if you had, you would have realized that the legal advice you were receiving and the board was receiving uh, was in contravention of the Act. Uh, have you bothered to read the contribution agreements with ICIT? Um, and honorable member, as I was started in my last answer, the contribution agreements were negotiated between uh, management and uh, the companies. So well, they were well, all individuals to project, individual to projects. Uh, you so we sat did not on have the board. You sat on the board, and you were voting yes or no in respect of funneling money out the door. And had you bothered to read the contribution agreements, you would have learned that when you voted to approve millions of dollars in COVID funding, uh, putting aside the conflicts of interest, uh, that it was also in contravention of the contribution agreements with ISID. But you didn't bother to read those agreements, did you? Honorable member, the 
the COVID um, approvals that were made, the second COVID approvals, I was only on the board for the second COVID approvals, came to us with um, a blanket set of funds with no list of companies to give management discretion. And, and, and when I asked management um, whether or not this was in, because I specifically asked the question or, and, and other board members did as well, whether or not this was in, in contravention or whether or not it was approved by government, Management confirmed it was approved by government, um, and there was Mention no of a contribution the agreements. Age. And you said, or, or at least Mr. Rumet said, and Mr. Sharon said in their testimony that the board approved those funds because ST, SDTC's portfolio companies were struggling during COVID. But you know, sir, that that isn't true. Uh, honorable member, I do know a lot of companies were struggling during COVID. Um, so we took it on face value that uh, management had canvassed all you, the you, companies you, and, and had face value, sir. information. Sir, which through you, Mr. Chair, it's my just, time yeah, reclaiming just my order, time. Order, order, gentlemen, as I said, the, it, we're trying to safeguard the interpreters here as well as maintain decorum. Mr. Cooper, you have the floor, please. The whistleblower testified that at the time of the second crunch of the improper and unlawful so-called COVID relief payments, of which you were then on the board, SDTC had completed a full survey of the total portfolio of SDTC companies and found that every single company on average had over 14 months of runway, proving that the companies that received the money didn't need the money. You would have seen that analysis, wouldn't you have? Honorable member, we did receive the analysis. I can't speak to the specific facts you mentioned, but there were concerns with supply chain. There were concerns with a number of issues and even companies that I was involved with that had no involvement with SDTC were deeply concerned about those. So 14 we did months of runway, 14 months of runway and the money went out the door. Yet sir had nothing to do with COVID relief and everything to do with funneling money into the companies in which board members had interest. And that's what really was going on. Mr. Umat, when you last appeared before this committee in December, you stated that at, at SDTC, quote, the conflict of interest management procedures are rigorously followed. Do you stand by that? Absolutely not. Absolutely. The procedures have been respected, but the documentation did not reflect it at certain points, and it was recognized by the Auditor General, and uh, it's been noted. Mr. Uh, Umet, you keep claiming that uh, the minutes were the problem, not that there were conflicts of interest, not that money improperly went out the door, that there were inaccuracies in the minutes. But Ms. Lawrence stated and I'm referring to paragraph 69 of the Bersharon report, in which Ms. Bersharon was found guilty by the Ethics Commissioner, that with respect to the minutes, they were carefully reviewed and amended internally where necessary and should be considered accurate. Is Ms. Lawrence wrong? Is that what you're saying? I can only speak for myself. Yeah, he, I, he said he can only speak for himself. You have a me. small question of time remaining, Mr. Cooper. Well, I'll ask Mr. Umat if you're if you would apologize to Canadians for the conduct of the board. 186 conflicts of interest, uh, 38.5 million dollars in COVID relief payments that improperly went out the door millions of which went into companies of board members. Would you apologize and admit that that should not have happened? No. Je reconnais les, les... No. I recognize the findings of the Auditor General and the statements of the Honourable Member are false. Uh, 